You didn't know it was a strip, did you? And then there's the air conditioning and stuff. Yeah, does it? Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant around here, yes. Oh, well, sorry. I'm glad you came in then, bro. You're stripping off. You're stopping the time. Oh, now Fritchie starts. Oh, they put that in my hand. They're ready. Good evening, everybody. Is everybody ready? Good evening. Everybody settle down, find a seat. Pointing in the right direction. Oh no! No, don't do that. Don't jump out the window. Good evening. Now, um, most of you will know Brian Spreckley, but for those of you that don't, maybe the juniors, I just thought I'd give you a very brief potted history of Brian's CV. It's not his total CV, just parts of it. Just the parts. juicy bits. Just the bits. Um, Brian set up Salisbury Gliding Club and uh, then was headhunted to be the CFI booker. And when Martin and I started flying gliders in the 80s, Booker was the club, it was the, the place to be. It was all happening at Booker. I guess quite a bit of that was down to Brian. Ian Ashdown took me up for a, to the Booker Regionals to crew for him. And about a year after I'd been gliding, um, just suddenly saw these two guys come across the finish line in ASW20s, pulling up, dumping water. And they got out and they started talking about how one had taken two minutes off him there and another had taken two minutes off someone else. And that was my introduction to gliding competitions at Booker. Um, Brian then was national coach. And Brian, oh, Brian, Brian Bateson remembers being on one of Brian's coaching courses. Brian taught, oh, Brian had a bit of instructor. The <laughs> hard man he is. <laughs> 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 uh, Brian's married to Jill, who's a two times world champion. Um, wow. Brian probably started the Junior Nationals, that was all Brian's idea. The things that it evolved from other things that Brian was running before that. Um, Brian and Jill ran the European Soaring Club for years. Hundreds of UK glider pilots would have had great cross coat or flying experiences flying at Brian's places. Um, the Overseas Nationals, it's a good CV this, isn't it? <laughs> the, uh, the Overseas Nationals, I think Brian decided that glider pilots were getting fed up with rubbish weather, so he thought it would be a good idea to run the British Nationals in Spain. I went to do one of those and it was absolutely fantastic. Brian did everything, organised it, got the transport sorted out, the accommodation, set the tasks, did the met, did the scoring. Absolutely, we sorted out when he went for dinner in the evenings, the whole thing. <laughs> Better than butlins. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you get selected for a British team, uh, then Brian invented this thing with some others. Then you go to one of Brian's places and you do some training that teaches you to be a really good British team pilot. So, uh, yes, yeah, so all in all, there's probably nobody that's done more for British gliding in the last 30 or 40 years than Brian Spreckley. There isn't, there can't be anybody that's done more for British gliding. Um, come anybody that knows more about gliding, teaching gliding, training gliding, coaching gliding than Brian Spreckley. But of course, Brian's biggest achievement was to become world champion, 1987, 15 metre world champion, when there are only three classes in Banana in Australia. I remember before the internet, I remember going to get the newspaper in the evenings, the Telegraph, to uh, look at the results, because the results used to be in the Telegraph. And I remember seeing when Brian had won that. And uh, my last thing, my internet search, I saw a description uh, from one of the gliding magazines that described Brian, you might remember which magazine this was, as a, a slim, handsome flying instructor from Great Britain in the report for the uh, World Championships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe. But for once, the facts haven't been changed. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Brian Spreckley. If you don't hear me at the back, please remind me to speak up again, because sometimes I fade down a bit. Yeah? It's a bit embarrassing. In actual fact, what you realise when you get a long CV is you're very old. <laughs> <laughs> didn't used to be that long. There's a couple of things that uh, Paul did miss out, which I think are important, because there is a, uh, a tendency in gliding for people to associate competition pilots with competitions, to say, oh, it's all right for those buggers who fly those things and spend all that money, but they're not like us. Yeah? 
But in fact, I started gliding at the Lincolnshire Glide. Well, I went solo with the ATC, <coughs> like a lot of people did. I did my 16 launches and flew solo. So, uh, CFIs of today, remember, you don't need to take two years to get solo. And I went to Lincolnshire Gliding Club, which operated out of the airfield at Bardney in Lincolnshire. And I don't know if anybody's ever been to Bardney, but basically it's a set of chicken farms just downwind of a sugar beet factory. So the air is full of terrible sugar beet smell, which makes the beer taste funny in the evenings, and everywhere you walk, you walk in chicken shit. <laughs> and we had T31s, and we spent all our time going up and down the wire doing three minute launches. So my roots are very firmly in the base of gliding. Also, I started the Interclub League. And I started the Interclub League back in the days when I was at Salt Bee. Actually, I, w I worked for the BJ before I went to Booker. When I left Salt Bee and went to the BGA, I saw that there was a very big problem, which was not a problem for us at Salt Bee because we were structured differently. Most clubs had a problem that people would come into gliding, they'd go solo, a few of them would go solo, a lot of them would fall by the wayside, and then they'd struggle. And they'd struggle to go any further than that. And there was no real structure, there was no way of people advancing through. And if you look at most sports, they're much better structured for this sort of thing. They have a much, it's much easier for people to make progress, to find a way of going through. And one of the things we started was the Interclub League, which had, uh, inter which had a, a, uh, a novice, intermediate, and pundit. You still fly the Interclub League. Parham still flies the Interclub League? No. Shame on you. I know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but most, most clubs do. And the idea then, and it still works, was that these people in helped each other within the club. And that's one of the great strengths of gliding, is that there is a great depth of knowledge and people can help, it, help each other, but also one of its great weaknesses, <coughs> because the people at the top can often you know, suppress the people underneath. And, and, and it's one of those uh, paradoxes that we have, that as we've got older in gliding, we haven't probably got a lot wiser. And that's something that we'll probably talk about a bit later. This was all set up at the last minute. Um, I went around to see Paul just before Christmas, and he said, oh, it would be very nice if you come one evening. And I said, well, when I go back to France uh, on tomorrow morning, at 8 o'clock, uh, we won't be coming back here for quite a while. We don't visit England very often now for the obvious reasons, uh, which you're all aware of. <laughs> and part of them is driving from here to Winter Worthing in the morning, actually. And we don't come back very often, so this was very short notice. I didn't have time to prepare anything, so I said to Paul, how about getting some questions? So luckily you've written my notes for me. And I've got the sheet here with my notes on, questions are written. And what I've done is I've had a look at the questions that you've put forward. And what I'd like to do is just group those together a little bit. And just try to cover a, a generally around the subject that you've asked, rather than specifically answer the question. But before we do, I just need to get a bit of a feel for your experience level. Um, how, many, how many people in this room have got three diamonds? Wow. That's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? How many people have won the Nationals? <laughs> that was a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul, you've got to get round to it. Yeah? Uh, no. <laughs> and how many of you got Gold C? Got Gold C? Distance. Distance. That's quite a few. So you're quite an experienced bunch. Silver C? Oh, good. Now we're getting into the meaty end. And non silver C, never flown cross country, no silver. Two. That's good. Well, you're the future then. Yep. Uh, the other guys who are the most important people here. Um, let's just uh, look at some of these practical questions. I. I'm not terribly good at drawing on the board. I'm very pleased you've got a nice high up whiteboard uh, flip chart here for me to use because I need to draw some diagrams. But when I draw them, you need to listen to me because my dry diagrams are totally incomprehensible if you haven't watched what I've done yeah, because they look a little bit like knots and crosses. And the first questions I was going to um, cover was to do really with. Um, Thermal, thermal structure and technique and things. And what I thought we'd, I'd do is we'd do 40 minutes on gliding technique and practical stuff, and then we'd have a break, and then we'd do 40, 45 minutes on much more philosophical, general stuff about how you might progress and things like that. 
And in that first 40 minutes, we had a question here from, uh, who is it? Who asked this one now? What's the question? I might remember to ask that. I'm not answering all about how low day you thermal. Did <laughs> 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 Paul ask that question? <laughs> Somebody asked a question about centering, Paul. What was that? Steve White. Steve, Steve, Steve White. He asked something about centering. That one there. Centering technique. Centering technique. Right. Steve. 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 Yes, Steve. Steve. Six years ago in Brooklyn. Six years ago? Yeah. Right, you were in Bloemfontein. Uh, was I there? Yeah. I've only been to Bloemfontein. That was a coincidence, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spent 14 years. Yeah, I spent seven years as national coach and seven years as manager of Booker. And of course, I got often asked by people, how do you get sent? How do you centre in the thumbs? And of course, there are two issues here. One is finding it, and the other one is getting into it. The finding it, <laughs> we tried to condense a week's course here into 10 minutes, right? So it's a bit tricky. You know? But the, the first and most important thing is to be able to visualize what it is you're trying to do. Because if you can't visualize what you're trying to do and you can't work out what you're trying to do, you don't know how to do it. And I find that a lot of people who come and fly, who came to fly with us over the years and who I've been involved with with coaching, a lot of them hadn't worked out what the thermal looked like and what it, <coughs> what they were, um, what the environment was that they were working in, and consequently, their centering technique was something they learned in a K13 with the instructor, <coughs> and it involved straightening up every now and again and then banking again and hoping it was in the right place. Right? And I think it's really important just to very quickly just talk about the structure of the thermal. Whilst we do this, if you have any questions, please ask them. Yeah? If I lose you, or I say something you completely misunderstand or you don't understand, then please ask me, because it's important that you get the, get, get the basics absolutely right. And I don't want to talk about um, instability of the air and all that sort of thing, because that 